Hi, this is Larry Jordan. This is an excerpt of a power-up webinar entitled Apps and Plugins for Final Cut Pro 10. By the way, we have a new subscription membership service. All of our online video training, tutorials, and webinars are now available via subscription. This includes all of our Final Cut Pro 10 training and our Adobe training. For one low monthly fee, you get streaming access anywhere, anytime via the Internet. Plus, subscribers can attend any live webinar for free. This is a fast and low-cost way to access all of our online training. To learn more, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. Probably the one that got the most buzz with the release of 10.0.3 is the program called 7 to X. The manufacturer's Intelligent Assistance at IntelligentAssistance.com. It's a $10 standalone application that converts Final Cut Pro 7 projects into Final Cut Pro 10 using XML. Let me show you how this works. This is a Final Cut 7 project. Notice that I've got multiple tracks of audio. I got a bajillion and a half cuts. We have multiple tracks of video, including still frames and lots of text keys and lots of additional video. It runs about an hour. One of the things that I've learned working with Final Cut 7 is that you want to export files out of the browser as opposed to the timeline. I found the browser to be more stable. So I select my clip in the browser, go up to File, go down to Export. In this case, we're going to export an XML file. When you're exporting from XML, you always want to be sure that you're exporting at the highest possible version number. For Final Cut 7, that's version 5. The manufacturers told me that they want to be able to support exports out of Final Cut 6. It may not be as robust as Final Cut 7, but it's at least worth a try. But always export at the highest possible version number. If you're exporting a specific project, you do not need to check Include Master Clips Outside Selection. If you want to export everything and have everything in your project go across, then you want to make sure this is checked. In my particular case, I just want to export a single sequence and all the clips that are associated with it. Always, always have the Save Project with Latest Clip Metadata checked. That's always an excellent idea. When you click OK, it says, what are you going to call this? I'm going to call this Fat Ant which stands for the Film and Television Association of the Northwest Territories of Australia. <laughs> I did a, a corporate uh, training for a private user group, which is very cool. We had a chance to chat. and Anyway, let's call this Fat Ant Exports Fun to Do. And we click Save. Because I'm not exporting media, I'm only exporting pointers to media, the export process is very quick. And now that's it. We're done with Final Cut. I always make a point to quit Final Cut 7 before I do any XML processing, and I'll show you why in just a second. There's my application, 7 to X, 7 to 10 for Final Cut Pro. Just double-click it, and it opens up a dialog that says, where is the XML file? Well, it's right here. It's called Fat Ant Export. Click Open, and while it's calculating, we'll just hide this. Now, what it's doing is it is converting the XML content from Final Cut 7 format and changing it to Final Cut 10. And for those uh, features that need it, it's doing transcoding in the background, like images, for instance. At this point, you have a choice. If you send the file to Final Cut Pro 10, it's going to automatically take that file, send it over to Final Cut 10, open 10, open the file. Everything theoretically is great. For me, I've had enough problems with the XML that I find it much safer to save the XML file. And so I'm going to call this for X and save it to the desktop. So there's the XML file that came out of 7. There's the converted XML file that's ready for 10. Now I'll start Final Cut 10. There we go. Final Cut 10 is now started. I go up to the File menu, go down to Import, and select XML. It says, OK, where is it? It's right here, just so you see, Export for X. Click Import. It hums and whistles for about a minute. And what it's doing is it's parsing that XML file, linking to all the media, making sure everything it works. And in just a few seconds, it's there. So that is my project, and those are the clips that I wanted. What 7 to 10 has done is it's created a compound clip. That's my project. If I double-click the compound clip, it loads it up into the timeline. Let me just switch this over to lozenge view here. 
Shift Z. There's my sequence. My program runs slightly more than an hour. There's all my video cuts. There's all my audio cuts. I can see as I scroll up that all of my multiple layers are selected. But notice the red dots. There are some things that don't make the transition. For instance, with text. The content of the text, what I type, makes the transition, but the formatting of the text in terms of what font and what point size and the drop shadow, that does not make the transition because Final Cut 7 and Final Cut 10 map to fonts totally differently. Freeze frames will make the transition, but motion blurs do not. So what the application's done is it's highlighted where there's problems. Go to the timeline index, make sure the tags are selected. Let's just close this up a bit here. And you can see here's a drop shadow problem or a motion blur or a freeze frame that needs to be adjusted. You can go through and see what all the changes are, and they all relate essentially to text formatting. So you can make changes as necessary. The cool thing is that you're no longer locked out of bringing a Final Cut 7 project into Final Cut 10. Now, the limitations are not in the edit. The ins, the outs, the clips, that stuff makes the transition with no problem. Color correction generally does not, and many effects, if the same effect is not in Final Cut 7 and Final Cut 10, the effect itself won't make the transition. So the more finishing stuff won't convert. The editing stuff will convert. It's a killer application, and at $10 it needs to be in your arsenal, because that way you're always protected. Another thing you can do is to go through and do an XML export of all of your Final Cut historical projects, just so you've got it. So if you ever need it in the future, you've done a backup copy as an XML file, and the XML files are tiny. So if you're trying to figure out a way to move your Final Cut 7 projects to Final Cut 10, that utility called 7 to 10, available in the Mac App Store, can make your life a whole lot easier. For the complete version of this webinar, visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store. On the left-hand side, click Power Up Webinars and look for webinar number 65. And thanks.